SoFi is one of the most successful fintech companies of the last decade, and soon you might have the opportunity to invest in them. SoFi has grown from a small startup to a full-on bank, offering billions in financial transactions every year. And now Shamath Polyhapatia is planning on taking SoFi public in a SPAC, the same process he used to take Virgin Galactic public before it tripled in price. In this video, I'm going to go over how SoFi got to where it is today, talk about how you can invest in the company before it actually goes public, and finally go over how competitive SoFi would be as a public company when compared to traditional finance companies as well as other fintech competitors such as Robinhood. And if you want to make some guaranteed money, grab your two free stocks from Webull when you deposit $100 or more, and let's get into it. SoFi was founded in 2011 by four co-founders, including Mike Cagney, the then CEO. Cagney was a former trader at Wells Fargo, and he had later gone on to found his own hedge fund before then meeting his future co-founders at Stanford Business School. It was at Stanford that his co-founders decided to start their own company. SoFi started out as a purely student loan company, offering loans to students from Stanford Business School and eventually expanding to colleges around the US. After that, they then branched out into all aspects of personal finance, offering mortgages, a credit card, and expanding into their SoFi Invest app, a stock and crypto trading app. They even became the first fintech company to acquire a bank charter. But this growth from a small student loan company to a full-on bank capable of challenging traditional financial services did not happen overnight, and it wasn't all smooth sailing. Early on, SoFi was plagued by accusations of a toxic work environment. And over the years, every co-founder except the CEO eventually left to go find different ventures, all while SoFi continued to grow. But those cultural issues came to a head in 2017, when then CEO Mike Cagney was accused of harassment by several female employees. He was then replaced by current CEO Anthony Noto, who was the then chief operating officer of Twitter, had been a former managing director at Goldman Sachs and the chief financial officer at the NFL. Noto has led the company into new areas such as crypto investing and more recently building functionality to allow retail investors like you and me to invest in companies pre-IPO, something that has traditionally been reserved for institutional investors. Looking at their number of users, they have 1.8 million members with over $50 billion in funded loans. This is almost triple the 700,000 users that they had back in mid-2019. They also have an even larger number of users of their platforms, which I couldn't find updated numbers for, but back in 2019, numbered 7.5 million registered users. With their mobile stock invest app having pretty positive reviews in both the Apple App Store and the Android App Store. Now, I personally have not used the SoFi Invest app, but based on the video reviews I've seen on it, it seems like a pretty simple to use investing app that also provides some access to both crypto trading as well as investing in pre-IPO companies, making it at least somewhat competitive with larger players such as Robinhood and Webull. They currently have over 1,500 employees with over $22 billion successfully paid back on their loans. Now, because this is still a private company, we don't have too much insight into the specifics of their financials, but these numbers look good enough to warrant a deeper look. So the first thing we need to understand is how could we invest in SoFi and how are they actually going public? SoFi is not going public via an IPO like most companies have in the past. An IPO or initial public offering involves a company going to a Wall Street firm who helps estimate what their initial stock price can be. The company then has to spend resources going around to a bunch of different institutional investors trying to drum up buyers for the stock. This can be a very time consuming and resource intensive process, especially for a small, fast growing company that might not be producing a ton of income that they can spare. Plus, IPOs have historically underpriced the companies that they're bringing public by $37 million, which is money they're just leaving on the table. Rather than going this route, which other companies in the fintech space have done, Robinhood recently announced that they would be going public via an IPO, SoFi has instead chosen to go public via a SPAC. SPAC stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company, also known as a blank check company. Basically, a holding company will be taken public via a traditional IPO process and then later on down the line, that holding company will merge with the private company, effectively taking it public. The advantage to this is fewer SEC hoops to jump through, less overhead because the IPO process is usually done by investors who have a lot of experience doing just that via a lot of different SPACs, and it gives non-institutional investors a chance to buy at pre-IPO prices the same way that institutional investors can. IPOs on average have an 18.4% pop on day one, and that's in addition to the $37 million that's usually left on the table by pre-IPO pricing. That means that that is value that has historically been trapped and goes and transfers to the institution
institutional investors that invest in these companies and retail investors like you and me are completely blocked out of that process. So clearly there is an opportunity for retail investors to gain value from investing in pre-IPO companies. Now that being said, there is a reason that the IPO process exists. Investing in a newly public company can be very risky, especially because you and I don't have the same view into their financials that an institutional investor might or that we might have into an already public company's financials. 50% of newly IPO'd companies have dropped in their second day of trading and investing pre-IPO can be even riskier. In addition to the risk of price fluctuations, there's also the risk that a company just won't go public. Right now, SoFi is set to go public through a SPAC called Social Capital Hedo Sophia Holdings V Corp, ticker symbol IPOE. This is a holding company set up by Chamath Palihapitiya, one of the biggest proponents of SPACs and one of the bigger names in the space. This is a public stock that you could purchase right now. If you go on Google, you can find this ticker. Now note that if you look at the market cap of that ticker, it's not going to equal the full value of SoFi because only a portion of SoFi's shares are going to be merged with this already public company. The rest are still held by private investors. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there is some small level of risk that the merger never actually happens. SoFi is under no obligation to merge and theoretically in a worst case scenario, you could end up buying the holding company, which really has no value. And then SoFi might just decide to stay private. That being said, despite the risks, I think you can see how a SPAC can effectively give non-institutional investors access to investing in companies pre-IPO. Now I should talk about some of the controversy that has surrounded SPACs in the past, including those offered by Chaboth. Virgin Galactic tripled in value after being offered in an early SPAC, but Clover Health, which was also offered by Chaboth, later it turned out had an undisclosed SEC investigation ongoing when it went public. And when that news was finally revealed, the stock price dropped dramatically. And that's not to mention Nikola, which was not taken public by Chaboth, but it did go public in a SPAC, which turned out to be a mostly fraudulent company. Unfortunately, while SPACs do provide increased access for retail investors, they also come with their own set of risks that you need to be aware of. But assuming you know those risks, let's now look at SoFi's finances. To help guide investors before SoFi goes public, they have released initial estimates of what their future earnings are going to be. The initial SPAC valued SoFi at $8.65 billion at the standard initial share price of $10 per share. Since then, the shares have risen as high as $25 a share, though as I'm currently filming this video, they're sitting at around $17 a share. This gives SoFi a valuation of $12.4 billion. SoFi had over $200 million in net revenue in Q3 2020 and they estimate that they'll produce over $1 billion in estimated net revenue for 2021. This would put their year-over-year -year growth rate at approximately 60%. Now, where this estimate exactly comes from can be kind of hard to track down because pre-IPO companies don't have the same reporting as public companies do. So at some level, you kind of have to take these numbers by faith. In addition to the 1.8 million members that SoFi currently has on their platform, SoFi recently purchased Galileo Financial Technologies, a financial services API and payments platform with over 50 million active users that is growing like crazy. They processed $26 billion in September of 2019, and that increased all the way to $53 billion by March of 2020. So that leads us into the next question. Is SoFi or its holding company a good stock to invest in right now? Will it be able to compete with both traditional and future fintech companies once it actually goes public? Well, let's answer the first question. How well does SoFi stack up against traditional finance companies? Well, I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone who doesn't think that the finance industry is ripe for disruption. And we're already seeing some of that from the outside. Robinhood started offering no free trades to their users and pretty soon the rest of the industry had to adopt the same model in order to keep up. DocuSign is starting to allow people to sign their mortgages remotely without spending a whole afternoon at the title company. Just last week, I was making a video on how to create an NFT and I spent a total of six days waiting for two different transfers from my bank account. Imagine if you had money in SoFi, which you could quickly move from cash management to stock investing to crypto, all pretty much instantaneously at the speed of the internet. I think there is no question that fintech companies are going to come to dominate the traditional finance space. And I would argue that while some companies are going to try to survive by partnering with tech companies, similar to what Goldman Sachs did by offering a credit card through Apple, I think the real winner is going to be fintech native companies. I think about this the same way I think of my high growth software as a service stocks. In the same way that CrowdStrike dominates cloud security and Cloudflare dominates their part of the cloud market, these cloud native companies are at such an advantage over companies that try to move into their space after the fact. Similarly, I think it is much easier for a company built from the ground up as a fintech to become dominant in the fintech space than it is for a traditional finance company to kind of bolt on fintech technologies 
these after the fact. So if we assume that this is true, SoFi's real competition isn't going to be the Wells Fargo's and the Goldman Sachs of the world's, it's going to be other fintech companies. One of the most obvious fintech companies that SoFi is going to have to compete with is Robinhood, which despite their brief spat with Wall Street bets is still the most widely used stock trading app in the world. And it's clear that they have ambitions beyond stocks. Looking first at just Robinhood's trading platform, Robinhood started out by offering no fee trades to their users. Instead, making most of their money by selling their users orders to high frequency trading firms such as Citadel. The issue is Robinhood isn't alone in this practice. SoFi does the exact same thing. In fact, overall, up until around 2021, SoFi Invest, SoFi's stock investing app, was basically the exact same thing as a bare bones version of Robinhood, offering basically the same services with maybe slightly fewer features than the more mature investing app. That has changed in 2021, however, with SoFi beating Robinhood to offer their users the ability to invest in pre-IPO companies. While Robinhood is reportedly going to release the same feature, possibly to coincide with their IPO date, SoFi beat them to the punch and already pushed out this update back in March of 2021. Similarly, while Robinhood is starting to move into new areas by, for example, offering a debit card and offering a cash management account, SoFi already offers these services and more. I think the holy grail for Robinhood would be the ability to offer loans to their users. Because once you have someone with a 30 year mortgage, as long as you offer good financial services, chances are they're going to stay within your ecosystem and use a bunch of your different services. Robinhood, however, still needs to build up the capability of doing this. While SoFi started out as a loan company, meaning that they've been doing this all along. I think the final nail in the coffin for the competition between SoFi and Robinhood is that SoFi recently acquired a bank charter, allowing them the right to to offer banking services without needing to partner with another financial institution. Now Robinhood had tried to get a similar license, but they actually withdrew their application for a bank charter, possibly because they don't have the same banking industry ties that SoFi has with people in leadership who are managing directors at Goldman Sachs. Robinhood currently has to partner with Sutton Bank to offer these banking services, while SoFi, at least in the future, won't have to do that. They'll have all the flexibility they could ever want. So SoFi is quickly becoming the first truly full service FinTech company offering an investing app, crypto trading, mortgages, and now with a banking license, they can also offer retail banking services such as merchant acquiring, cash management, asset management, and trading without partnering with a third party. While there are risks to investing in a SPAC, and SoFi has struggled in the past with a toxic work culture, it's hard to ignore what they have achieved over the past 10 years. So who's to say where they're going to be 10 years from now? But let me know what you think of SoFi and if you personally would invest in them. I personally have not yet invested any money into SoFi, mostly because because I don't have any cash that is currently uninvested. When I do have some cash free up, probably after tax season, I may take a small 1% position in the company. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.